Evolution of eyes are believed to have occurred over millions of years, beginning with simple light detecting spots and ending with the very complex organisms seen today. They have become vital to species survival. Even Darwin knew that explaining eye evolution would be difficult, but the concept was plausible. The simple eye grossly misnamed due to the complexity of work it performs is believed to have started as light sensitive pigmented spots on the integument of a species. Over the course of millions of years, this simple spot managed to form into an eye cap, lined with a retina and enclosed by a lens, all of which are necessary for precise visual input. Though the exact morphology varies from species to species, the mechanism behind the simple eye seems to be consistent. Variances occur due to the environment in which a species lives, as well as how they are used. Simple eyes can be divided into two types, eye spots and eye caps. All vertebrates have eye caps with single lenses. Single lenses consist of the iris, cornea, pupil, lens, materius gel, optic nerve, macula, fovea, and retina. Most, Most vertebrates have a retina lens eye. Each eye contains several parts to help the eye focus images for the brain to decipher. Inside the eye contains a lens which helps focus light on the back of the eye. Most of the eye is filled with a clear gel called the vitreous. Light projects through the pupil and the lens to the back of the eye. The inside lining of the eye is covered by a special light sensing cells that are collectively called the retina, which converts light into electrical impulses from sensory cells called rods and cones. The eye contains around 120 million rods which are light sensitive, but are not sensitive to color. There are about six to seven million cones in the eye that provide it with color sensitivity and are much more concentrated in the central yellow spot known as the macula. This is a small sensitive area within the retina that gives central vision. The optic nerve then carries impulses to the brain. Eye color is created by the amount and type of pigment in the iris. Multiple genes inherited from each parent determine an animal's eye color. There are many variations between different eyes. For example, birds have special muscles in their eye that allow them to actively change the thickness of their lens and to alter the shape of their corneas. Whales have special hydraulics in their eyes that let them move their lenses nearer or farther from the retina. This unique system allows the whales to, see, to see properly both in and out of water and to compensate for the increased pressure they experience when they dive. The neo rio or zebrafish, became increasingly valuable as their use as a model organism, when in the 1970s, George Streisinger, a University of Oregon scientist, wanted to find the vertebrate model that was easier to use than mice, yet still genetically easy, manipulated easily. He chose zebrafish because of their ease of access, short development time, and primarily because the embryos develop, develop in a clear egg outside of the female. Since the 1990s, there has been a huge focus on research using zebrafish, and the fish genome is currently being sequenced. One significant area of research focuses on the retinas of zebrafish, which contain cones capable of seeing red, green, blue, and ultraviolet light. They are able to respond to visual cues in only four or five days post-fertilization. During research at Harvard University, John E. Dowling discovered that in an adult zebrafish, circadian rhythm can affect the sensitivity of the rods and cones in the retina. Zebrafish will lose light sensitivity during the night, only to regain it during the day. After examining larval zebrafish, he discovered that fish retina will turn off retinal response at night. He believes this is done as an energy-saving me measure. Dark adaptive photoreceptors consume 10 to the 8th ATP per second, and by turning off these at night when the fish is not actively looking for food, a considerable amount of energy is saved. Another thing to note is that zebrafish, like all vertebrates, have Mueller glia cells that act as a support for retinal nerve cells. What is interesting about the Mueller cells of zebrafish, however, is that in the event of damage to the retina, they will differentiate into multipotent progenitors. While it has been shown that this process also happens to some degree in mammalian cells, very few of the de-differentiated cells re-enter the cell cycle, and mammalian Mueller glia do not reactivate key progenitor genes, so the retina damage is unable to be repaired. Because of their similarities to human, mus musculus, or house mouse, has become a staple in research facilities. Sequencing of the mouse genome was complete in 2000, and was found that despite there being a 14% difference in the size between mice and human genomes, Virtually every gene present in the mice is also present in humans, as well as the area around these genes. 
99% of mice genes have a counterpart in the human genome and were inherited from a common ancestor. Though the genome is so similar, the genes themselves sometimes take on different roles or are active at different points of the cycle. At an initial glance, the eyes of mice and human may appear the same, but are very different. They, like zebrafish, have the same components and function in the same way. The most obvious difference is lens size. The mouse lens is much larger, taking up most of the room inside the eye itself. This is backed up by the volume of vitreous fluid in the mouse at 5.3 microliters compared to 5.2 milliliters in the human eye. Photoreceptors called rods and cones receive external light signals, which are then transmitted through the optic nerve to the brain where they are deciphered and interpreted as visual messages. Rods perceive light at low levels, but do not contribute the ability to, to interpret color. Cones are responsible for receiving colors of light. Mice have a cone rod ratio of 0.028. In contrast, humans have a ratio of 17.7. What this says is that mice have a very small number of cones compared to the number of rods. While humans have a larger number of cones compared to rods, this makes sense in respect that the mice are nocturnal animals, which are primarily active at night, while humans are, adapt are adapted for activity during daylight hours. One interesting thing to note is that while mice lack the ability of seeing colors in the red spectrum, they can see ultraviolet light, an ability which humans lack. Recently, researchers have been able to take mice that are visually impaired, restore not only their sensitivity to light, but their ability to see light in the red part of the spectrum. Scientists injected photochemical mo molecule AAQ into the retinas of blind mice. This process is called AAQ-mediated photosensitization and works by amplifying light response by acting directly on the cells. Other researchers modify the DNA of mice, introducing genes that code for production of red photoreceptors from humans. By doing that, they were able to allow mice to see in the red end of the light spectrum. The ability of both mice and zebrafish to respond positively to retinal therapy is a trait that can be useful for studies in various areas of research in the eye condition of humans. While the eyes differ slightly from that of humans, the genomic sequencing and overall function of their eyes are similar enough to allow the potential for great strides in treatment of eye conditions and diseases in humans. The compound eye goes back for uh, 500 million years. These eyes have been found in trilobites and crustacean fossils and are preserved because of the eye consists of calcite crystals. The compound eye is made up of a series of compound eyes together. Each lens is part of a unit called a mantidium. Uh, every mantidium appears on the surface of a single facet and contains 7 to 11 sensory cells. Each amentidium is surrounded by several retinal cells, which secrete the rhabdome. The rhabdome and retinal cells are surrounded by pigment cells that have, been, uh, have the function to separate each amidium from its neighbor. Retinal cells are con uh, connected to nerve cells leading to the optic ganglia. In the insects, the compound eye contains anything from a few amidia to over 30,000 or more. For example, silverfish only has a few amentidia, but the dragonfly contains 30,000 or more in both eyes. Dragonfly hunts and, and spends most of its time in the air, so better visual, visual resolution is necessary. In insects like these, the density of the facets is greatest in the part of the eye that is used for more accurate vision. The size of the compound eye can sometimes vary from sex to or the insect. For example, male flies uh, have larger eyes than female flies to find mates easier. The insect species uh, that are active at twilight and, or even night can find the rhabdon is not connected to the crystal cone and the amidium is not completely isolated from each other. Because of this, uh, it leads to better light yield and more less sharp images. Both types of the eyes are combined by nature. Drosophilia, like many other insects, utilize the compound eye structure. Each compound eye is composed of many repeating units called omatidium. Each omatidium consists of a lens, crystalline cone, visual cell, and pigment cells that separate each omatidium. The pigment cell ensures that only light entering the omatidium reaches the visual cells and triggers nerve impulses. Each drosophilia eye consists of approximately 800 omatidium. Each omatidium is pointed at a single area in space and contributes information about one small area in the field of view. 
the composite of all Omatidium images is called a mosaic image that makes up the entire field of vision. Specialized groups of photoreceptors, called interphotoreceptors, in Drosophilia use green, blue, and UV light to distinguish between colors. Outer photoreceptors are used to perceive shapes, to perceive shapes and motion within the field of vision. Because of the build of the anatomy of the Drosophilia eye, it has nearly a 360 degree field of vision, allowing it to be extremely acute of moving objects. Drosophilia tend to have poor resolution with a short range of vision, seeing only a few millimeters in front of them. Researchers at the Drosophilia eye have continued to flourish in the past de decade. One such area that scientists are studying is the development of the compound Drosophilia eye. Molecular links between cell proliferation Proliferation and tissue specifications is being studied and how it relates and affects in the development of cancer and tumor genesis. The development of the Drosophilia eye is also giving researchers insight into how generation and final organ shape is driven. While the human eye and compound eye may seem completely different, Drosophilia research is also cultivating human eye disease solutions and treatment avenues. Dragonflies are in their order Odonata. They, have also, they also have a compound eye and are considered to have tremendous vision. The dragonfly eye is very large in relation to the body. Their compound eyes are extremely acute to movement in the field of vision and can distinguish form, forms of various objects. Their eyesight is important for catching prey and intermingling with other dragonflies, such as reproduction acti activities. The dragonfly compound the dragonfly compound eye consists of 30,000 omatidia. These omatidia collect visual information from the environment, each from a different area of the field of vision, and together they form a mosaic image as discussed earlier. The dragonflies are not as high resolution as vertebrate eyes, but are very sensitive to movement and polarized light. Behavioral evidence suggests that dragonflies have some sort of color vision. It is believed that stereoscopic vision is used to estimate their distance from prey, where they use both eyes to visualize the distance. Their eyes wrap around and meet at the top of their head, which gives them a 360 degree view of their surroundings. A dragonfly's eyes contain three oxali, which are considered a simple eye. Each oxalis has a curved lens and extremely sensitive to light intensity changes. While the exact functions of the three oxali are not completely understood, it is thought that they facilitate with phosphorus Ability. Current research is being dug on dragonflies to determine how they see and how it affects their flight capabilities. Scientists are studying how light affects their behavior during flight since it's believed that light has a stabilizing effect. Because dragonflies can control their flight movement and hovering abilities, companies want to apply this information and improve aircrafts. This research is also being used to program and develop microaircraft machines. While Drosophilia and the dragonfly both employ the compound eye, they, they, benefit, they benefit from it in slightly different ways. For example, both insects use it to locate movement in their field of vision. However, a dragonfly applies it to feed at dusk, while Drosophilia feed mainly during hours of light. Also, the structure of the compound eye differs between the insects. The dragonfly eye wraps around its head and touches, while the Drosophilia eye remains separated. The structure of the compound eye differs based on the insect's environments and need. Even though the compound eye differs from the human eye, we are still employing our knowledge of the compound eye for, both, for our benefit and use.